Welcome back to Fireside Knicks with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So yesterday we discussed centers the Knicks could target via the trade market. Today, we're talking about game three, actually, of the Summer League for this Knicks team. You know, they lost to the Brooklyn Nets in game two. They bounced back against the Sacramento Kings. They gave up a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, but just managed to squeeze out a win against the Kings. And you know who we have to thank for that? Mr. Tyler Kolick, one of my favorite players in this most recent draft class. I know, you know, Bacom Dadier probably isn't going to make this team. He probably ends up in the G League developing and refining his skills. He's only 18 years old. They see a lot of prowess and potential in his game. Um, you know, he was a really solid, you know, spot-up shooter. You know, he, he can be aggressive. He's just inexperienced and young, uh, to tell you the truth. He just needs to go against NBA-caliber talent. Um, he's looked spotty during summer league performance, but he is so young, such a fresh kind of raw prospect at this point. I just don't think we even have seen close to what he'll end up becoming in a couple of years. Um, we saw a lot of Rokas Jakubaitis yesterday, and he looked really good. So we'll talk about him. A uh, really underrated Ukrainian center. He's been with the Knicks, in the Westchester Knicks, rather, for two years. Really interesting player. This could be an interesting player that ends up maybe with the Knicks or even winning a roster spot. We'll talk about him a bit. But Tyler Kolok was the star of this game. He finishes shooting, I believe, six of... Um, 14 from the field. So, you know, not extremely efficient. He was 3 for 5 from three-point range after going 0 for 5 um, in game two. He was 6 for 7 from the free throw line, really solid. Ended up with four rebounds, an impressive eight assists, um, and 21 points. He did turn the ball over four times. But, you know, the, the defense is spotty. He is willing to give the effort. But the point production, he had a nasty left-handed layup. The guy is elite with his left hand going to the basket. Um, kind of similar to Brunson, actually. That really, he, you can see a lot of Brunson when you're watching him play, Ryan. But, you know, how so far, how impressed are you by Kolek? You know, he's had one inconsistent game against the Nets, but the court vision is elite, man. You see him drive to the rim, and he's, his peripherals are absolutely phenomenal. This guy, while he may not be a prominent piece upcoming season, I could see him being a prominent piece. He can kick the ball out to the wings. He can uh, maximize talent on the floor. And when he goes to his left, the guy's really hard to stop. You know, what are you seeing uh, from these young Knicks and who has stood out to you the most? Yeah, Tyler Kolick had the game-winning play. He ties the game on a layup, uh, and it, he draws contact, gets the foul call, drains the, the free throw. Knicks win the game. Obviously, wins and losses, not really something I care too much about in the summer league, but it is awesome to see, you know, a guy like Tyler Kolick, who was, you know, again, an early second-round pick, uh, somebody who was selected at the same slot that Deuce McBride was selected a few years back. Um, obviously, Deuce McBride has become a key part of this team's bench. Uh, you know, you, you think of Mitchell Robinson, another key figure on this rotation, selected in the second round. Jalen Brunson that's a second rounder uh you know the, you can seriously develop some really strong rotation players if you're good at drafting if you're good at identifying talent and good at player development and Kolek I mean eight assists four rebounds he did turn the ball over four times but he did pick up two steals as well I, I did kind of throw out that comparison uh, to Josh Hart in the sense of like just the motor, right? Like the motor is very strong. Um, you know, we'll see how his offensive skill set translates to the NBA. That's always the thing that that is harder to predict. Can they be a ball handler at the next level? Can they be a shot creator at the next level? Are they more of a spot up shooter? Are they more of a facilitator? Are they more of a role player? That's the question he'll have to answer at the next level. As this team's currently constructed, it doesn't seem like he'll have a heavy shot creator role, right? Like even if he's the primary backup point guard, or excuse me, if he's a backup point guard. He's not going to be, you know, the star player on this team. So, you know, he'll have to adjust to that role, and I think he will beautifully. Um, and as you mentioned with, uh, you know, some of the some of the centers that have played it for the Knicks, you know, they have some interesting options playing well for them. I don't necessarily believe they're going to play well enough to stop the Knicks from getting a backup center, um, nor do I think they will supersede Jericho Sims on day one on the depth chart. Uh, but it is good to see them play well. Uh, you know, you hope that somebody can step up and be just another option for you and your organization. Uh, it's always good to have depth. And then kind of, as you mentioned, like the not necessarily what I would call the, the story of the day, but certainly a player that you think of a lot, Rokas. Rokas is, I mean, he, he played really well. 7% from the field, uh, plus 6 uh, for his uh, on-off, 5 assists, 2 steals, a block, hit both his 3-pointers. You know, this is a player who, you know, he's only 23 years old. It's like this is like a... 28 year old 29 year old with draft rights he is still somebody who you know realistically can carve out a, a strong nba career but what i would ask you alex is do you also feel like there's it's weird it's like the timing doesn't really match up for the position he plays what the knicks need i'm not sure he's gonna play his way onto this team and i'm not saying that to say he's not talented i'm just saying that to say i'm not necessarily sure there's a role for him right now what do you think 
Um, so I'm going to be very blatantly honest. There is zero chance Rokas Jakobaitis makes this team. <laughs> and the reason is he's, he's a combo guard, right? He's not really a point guard. He's more of a shooting guard. When is he ever going to sniff minutes on this roster? You have campaign Jalen Brunson, Miles McBride, and Tyler Kolick, Dante Chivincenzo as that, you know, shooting guard too. There's just, there's no... There's no opportunities for him. He's going to ride the bench, and the Knicks desperately need more support at the big man position unless they bring back Precious Chua and, you know, maybe they go out and trade for somebody. But right now, I just don't see how Rokas makes this roster. I don't see a spot for him. Um, I, I think that there's a better chance of Daddy making this team than there is Rokas just because, you know, he spent the last three years in Barcelona and Spain, and, and, and he's been not that good in Spain. He's, it's a different tile, style of game. You have to be able to play a role um, if you're playing in the NBA, and... I just don't get the sense that he plays that role at a very high level. You know, he had a really good game yesterday, but it just it, he doesn't do that consistently, right? That was an outlier in a larger sample size of saying, like, he's not very consistent. Um, seven for seven in the field, two two shots made from three-point. I mean, he was really, really solid. There was a moment in the fourth quarter where he was dribbling. He gave up the ball um, on a turnover. He tracked the guy down and blocked it, and it was really nice. Like, overall, I liked what I saw from him. I just need to see that every single game. Not, maybe not seven for seven because that's unrealistic, but I need to see him, like, playing hard, playing a role, consistent, earning more minutes, showing leadership. That's what you need to do to be to become a player that offers you value. Like, are you going to trust Rokas Jacobitis to, like, come in and make an impact like Miles McBride did last year off the bench? If you don't see him doing what Miles McBride did last year, why is he deserving of a roster spot? Um, you know what I mean? Like, I don't see how he, how he makes this team. The Knicks need more depth at power forward. They don't have another big man behind, you know, aside from having, like, OG and McCall Bridges starting. Their depth at power forward is non-existent. You know, Josh Hart's too small. Dante, they're both really shooting guards for the most part. Um, you, you know, if you bring back Precious, you can consider him a power forward slash center. But, like... He's not offering you the same thing as Julius Randle or Bridges or OG. Like you're, the drop off there is significant when it comes to depth at that position. Um, he can't provide that, which is why I do think this team ultimately brings back Precious Achua um, and does bring in another center. Because I don't think Precious Achua is like a good center. I think he's a better power forward. He can rebound, play some decent defense, and you know he can he can throw, throw down some dunks every now and then. He's a not very good shooter, but he's not the type of big man you want replacing Mitchell Robinson when he inevitably goes down. You know what I mean? Like, are you comfortable with Precious Achua playing center if, if Mitch miss, misses any time? I certainly am not. Yeah, and you know, as currently, again, just as currently constructed, the Knicks need either one of two things. Number one, somebody to be their backup point guard. It feels like Kolek is either A, going to run with away with it, or B, be in serious contention for it. Um, and then you need backup uh, big man depth. And it doesn't feel like, like it, it's, that's... It, that's just not a role. Like that's those are two very specific things. And when we're talking about a team that's in finals contention, right? Not saying that you should never want to look to improve internally, right? Because if you can improve through guys that are already in your organization, it saves you money, it saves you draft capital, whether that's draft picks or players. But it's so hard to consistently do. The Knicks have done a great job of plugging in holes on their roster with some of their internal guys. Uh, but I, I think for this team specifically. You can't tackle both your center and guard depth issues with – or point guard depth issues um, with internal options. One of them can be Tyler Kolek. The other, I think, has to be an external addition. So as currently constructed, this team just they – need, they need a proven guy on top of – they need one more proven guy because – when like it's it's not as if we're talking about like Jalen Brunson's the primary point guard we know that right and not saying that he's not ever going to get hurt but his injury history is pretty it's pretty strong right like his track record when it comes to health is strong you can rely on him to play the majority of his games Mitchell Robinson is not that Mitchell Robinson you kind of chalk him up to miss a good portion of the season and that isn't a diss on him it's not like he's trying to get hurt it's not like he's not taking care of himself it's it's the it's part of the game, right? Like he's just a very physical center and unfortunately his body betrays him, right? That that happens. You can't do anything about that as an athlete other than, you know, play on a team that is prepared to deal with that. The Knicks aren't prepared to deal with that. I remember those Jericho Sims minutes. Dude, he's awful. He's He's been terrible, right? I, I'm not saying he can't develop, but he's been, uh, you know, otherworldly bad. When Deuce McBride was more of like a sp- a uh, plug and play like every now and then player he at least contributed right like there were the, the Knicks actually got the Knicks got better with him on the court Sims is you can see the difference in production um I don't want to place the pressure of being the direct backup on any of these guys any of these guys playing no matter how old they play one of these guys can go for 30 
I still would want to put that pressure on them. So, Alex, I, I, I don't... It, it's weird, because I, I feel like at the same time I want to praise some of the young players in this team, but I also want to emphasize, this is a win-now window, a win-now te- win now Knicks team. This isn't a team that should be experimenting with players who have no NBA track record or no... no uh, or don't have a likely outcome of becoming a, star, a great player or a great center because they need that impact now. They can't really wait. This, the seeding in the East can be brutal. You got the Bucks. You just had a Gary Trent Jr. Philly, obviously, they had a big offseason. Um, you know, you have the, the Cleveland Cavaliers. I know they're kind of a mess, but, you know, they're still really good in the regular season at the very least. Uh, that's on top of Boston being the top team in the East. If you fall into that fifth seed, you put yourself in a bad position. You don't want to get a Boston matchup in round two. You want to kind of avoid that. The best way you can avoid that is being the two seed. So regular season performance does matter, and I don't want to put that pressure on G-leaguers. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Look, I think in a perfect scenario, uh, the Knicks end up bringing back Achua and then finding a way to, like, offload some salary and add another, like, actual center. Or you ask Achua to be... I mean, look, the, the truth is that Julius Randle doubles as a big man, right? Like, he doubles... He can play down low, crash the boards, rebound, use his physicality... But you're taking him out of position where he he should be as a power forward, right? You're, you're asking him to play the five. And that's not exactly what you want for Randall. That's not his best usage, which is why Mitchell Robinson is so important, blocking those shots. And then Randall's there to clean it up and reborn off, off the back end. Um, there is a player, though, to keep an eye on. And, and look, this is a very hot take. This is a very unlikely take, very unlikely situation that this actually unfolds. But the Knicks have one player that's really impressed me during summer league performance so far. Three straight games, every game. This guy has been extremely impressive. And it's Dmitry Skapetsev out of Ukraine. Un- undrafted. He's been with the G League for two years. Uh, five rebounds in this past game. Plus eight. Uh, plus minus and 11 points. He shot four for five from the field and three for four um, from the free throw, from the charity stripe. So, you know, what I like about uh, Dimitro is that He's efficient in every single game. He tends to produce. If you look at what he did against Brooklyn, he was absolutely fantastic. Um, he led the team in plus minus at plus nine against Brooklyn. He had 19 points, shot six of seven from the field in 17 minutes. Um, had one three-point shot, which he made. Six of eight from the charity stripe. Nine rebounds, two assists, three steals, and a block. He's been absolutely fantastic in each and every game um, that he's played up to this point. So I've been pretty impressed by him. Um, in the first game, he didn't. He played 20 minutes. Um, you know, he had nine points, four or six from the field. He had seven rebounds and two assists and one block. Every game he's shown up and performed at a really, really solid level. And he's eaten about 20 minutes here per game. So, you know, maybe that's someone that the Knicks would consider incorporating into the equation. Like, keep in mind, guys, Isaiah Hartenstein was a backup last year, right? We think of Isaiah Hartenstein as this, like, star center, this massive piece of this team, this assist man, this playmaker at the big man position, this rebounder. Guys, he was backing Mitchell Robinson up to start last season. He was a reserve for us. He emerged and became a, a stud player over the course of the season. When Mitch went down, he was ready to take on that responsibility, and he wasn't being paid very much last year to play that role. So, you know, maybe the Knicks see a lot of similarities in a guy like Dimitro, who, you know, rebounds very well. He has some assists every game. He has some steals and some blocks. He's very efficient around the rim. He can even shoot some threes every now and again. He's skinny. But I think this guy could be a decent player. You know, he, he's not that bad. I, I'm curious to see if they incorporate him into their spring, um, rather like, you know, not rather spring, but more so their, uh, you know, preseason games when they do come around. I wonder if Dimitro gets an opportunity to play some minutes for the Knicks and see if he can match up against some real NBA talent. Now, he's going up against mostly G-leaguers, rookies, young guys, and he's dominating them, to be quite honest with you, and he's playing solid defense. You know, I don't know if you've watched any of him during the summer league, Ryan, but has he stood out to you? Because to me... I've been watching this guy and saying, this guy needs to go against higher competition. I need to see this guy against better talent because there might be something there um, that, that, that the Knicks could extract. And maybe you can get a really cheap, decent backup center that can, you know, worst case scenario, goes back to the G League and you look to the trade market to find another player like a Clint Capella or whatever it might be at the deadline. And you just kind of use him and it pressures at you to offset um, any injuries to Mitch for the first half of the season. Yeah, so I mean, again, I, I just I would love to get some like I wouldn't mind keeping him around as like, hey, he's in the G League, you know, you pull him up if need be, but I need a dedicated backup, and I would almost argue like I don't think Achua can be that direct backup, right? Like the guy who slots into the lineup because it's not an emergency situation; it's an expected situation. I think that's where it's different for me. Like I, I just feel like it's. Like, I know for a fact that Mitchell Robinson will miss 20-something games next year, if not more. I know that. I know it for a fact. 
Um, I know that people are going to say, well, you can't pre predict injuries. In most cases, I agree, but right, like it's it's just it's a trend it's not like an outlier case not like a once it's not like randall falling um you know it, it's not like randall falling on his shoulder or whatever like that was a freak accident this is just it happens every year i need a I, like heart and yes he was the backup but he was capable of being a starting cow he was a capable starting center and that's why he excelled in the way he did i do agree though that you know we can't just look at the value of guys the year prior um because Hartenstein took such a massive leap with the Knicks. The Knicks, I mean, Achua took a massive leap with the Knicks. The Knicks get guys, or big men specifically. New Orleans Lowell a few years back when he went from, I mean, just a nobody to a great defensive big. And the Knicks were able to replace that. Like, I, I think there are ways to replace it. Uh, again, Jalen Duran just kind of sticks out. I think that's the guy that you can do the most work with in terms of developmental work. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's not that I'm not impressed. It's not that I'm not, I'm not interested. It's not like I'm not intrigued. It's just that uh, with my intrigue, I still need to remember this team needs a capable starter b backing up Mitchell Robinson, not an unproven option. Yeah, no, I, and I completely agree. Like we talked about the options yesterday in terms of, um, you know, Jalen Duran or, you know, Walker Kessler seems to be too expensive. Albert Sangoon's off the board. Uh, Brooke Lopez, who probably would be a decent option if the Bucks wanted to offload his salary. Clint Capella, which makes a lot of sense. But we'll see how things progress at the center, but more so like, the other guys that have, you know, who really stinks. <laughs> I hate to say this is Dwayne Washington. Um, I watching him play, he tried to operate that team as if he was the guy. This guy bricked that last shot so hard. I don't even think it touched the rim by like a foot or two. Um, you know, he, what he shot six for 18, he missed all seven of his three point attempts yesterday. He played some okay defense, had four assists, didn't turn the ball over that many times. But when you brick a shot like that, it's basically a turnover. They don't list it as a turnover, but when you miss the rim by two feet, it's a turnover in my book. Um, you know, so that was kind of disappointing on that front. But, you know, Joku Baitas was solid. You know, he's been pretty decent on defense. Kennedy, um, rookie, I, I, I like him. He's been solid. Not doesn't really show up on the stat sheet that much, but he went two for three from downtown. Interesting player. Maybe some guy that could develop um, over the course of the next few seasons, but... Kolick's my my dog, man. I love Tyler Kolick. I think that he's going to be a really solid NBA player. He's got a lot of Jalen Brunson in him. Um, I see some Austin Reeves. If he can really, he shot 38% from three at the collegiate level. If he can carry that over to the NBA, going to be really, really good. I mean, the defense has to improve. Positioning has to improve. He's got to anticipate more. He looks like he doesn't know where he is sometimes. He's a little bit slow to react. The effort is there. He's just reactions are slower because um, he's not really in chemistry. He's not in flow with his teammates. I don't really think he knows where he has to be all the times, um, but that's okay. You know, he's young. They're going to get him where he needs to be. And the best way to get some minutes on a Tom Thibodeau team is to play great defense. Um, so he's got to improve in that regard. That's really what got Miles McBride into this rotation is defense. The shooting came after, and then he became a staple. Um, but Tyler Coe, like, you know, that this is a guy improved the defense, maintained the vision and the passing and the playmaking. He's going to be a, he's going to be a backup point guard for this team for a long time. He's got a bright future ahead of him in the NBA, as long as he keeps maintaining that growth. So, you know, that's kind of my, my two cents on the on Tyler Kolick. But guys, always happy to hear your thoughts down below in the YouTube comment section. Hope you guys enjoyed the Fireside Knicks episode. Back at it again. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.